Hi Cancer, Sun, Moon, Ascendant, or Venus, this is Dane, and I'm going to be doing your June 16th to the 30th, 2020 reading for you. Now I ask that this reading resonates with you, don't forget to give it a thumbs up, and also to subscribe to my channel. So let's dive into this reading and see what this time frame has in store for you. I'm going to be starting with your Spirit Guide Animal Cards. These are also your totem animals for this time. So if you see these animals in the wild or you see an image of these animals, this is your angels and your spirit guides tapping you on the shoulder saying, remember this message, Cancer. So let's see. Cancer, June 16th to the 30th, 2020 Cancer. June 16th to the 30th, 2020 Cancer. June 16th to the 30th, 2020 Cancer. Show me clearly, show me clearly, show me clearly, show me clearly. So we have right here the whale spirit, trust the great mysteries. And then we have the cow spirit, which says the miracles are endless. And I love the cow spirit. So as you trust in the great mysteries, know the miracles are endless. You're not stuck. You're not held back. And that's going to be a very important thing for you to, to know during this time. And then we have your chakra cards. Oh, goodness. There we go. All right. Cancer, June 16th to the 30th, 2020. Cancer, June 16th to the 30th, 2020. Show me clearly, show me clearly, show me clearly, show me clearly. We have abundance, which is beautiful. And then we have relationships. So we have the root and the sacral chakra coming forward. And now for the tarot. Show you guys it. Cancer, June 16th to the 30th, 2020 Cancer. June 16th to the 30th, 2020 Cancer. June 16th to the 30th, 2020 Cancer. Show me clearly, show me clearly, show me clearly, show me clearly, show me clearly. At the center of everything, we have you, Cancer. You're coming through as the King of Cups, as a powerhouse, as a equalizer. That is absolutely beautiful. You're crowned by the King, by the Knight of Swords, an air sign energy, a Gemini, a Libra, an Aquarius. Then we have the Ace of Pentacles, which is beautiful. You have the Queen of Swords, again, an air sign energy, Gemini, Libra, Aquarius. The Ten of Swords. The Empress. Oh, I love that. The Ten of Cups. The Ten of Wands. The Eight of Pentacles. And the Three of Cups. Yeah, okay. So you have a very strong connection right here with an air sign energy. Again, Gemini, Libra, Aquarius. This is either somebody who you might have been in a relationship with this person. And I say happened because for some of you, this person has betrayed you in a way that you're like, man, I can't, I can't trust them again. All right. So that is going to be something that's very important to know. It's like you can get back together with them if that's what you desire. They have played mind games with you and they have done so very much on kind of very sneakily, okay? Very much they've kind of manipulated things by themselves and that's what I'm seeing right here for, for some of you. It doesn't have to be all of you. This it can be a very specific message for a very specific person because what I see also is that you might have two air sign energies in your life, right? This is a person who very much knows what they want. You would actually consider this person almost kind of like the battle empress. And that is just a beautiful depiction. So this can be a female or somebody with very strong feminine energy, very caring, very nurturing, you know, kind of a atypical feminine energy. And right here, this is your person. This is your rock. This is the person that can be, I mean, they can be snippy. They can be a bit short, sharp with things, but they are your rock. And this is going to be a sense of really coming back home to where it is you, you, you belong within your life and how it is that you want to move forward. You've worked very, very hard for this. This can be with another person and this can simply be with yourself where you're sitting there and you're having your mind and your heart come together and you've really weathered 
a tremendous storm that has led you to the fact that you have three tens here. So divinity is saying that you have completed a cycle, and as you've completed the cycle, you enter into this place of the heart, which is so absolutely at home for you. And you're having your heart and your mind come together to move you forward towards power, towards abundance, towards holding this prosperity in, the, in your hands and seeing that it is for you. Now, this is permeating every single aspect of this time. And this is why you need to know, and that's the Ace of Pentacles. This is why you need to know to trust in the great mysteries, because there are things that are moving forward. And there is a bit of confusion, of being overwhelmed, of looking at things and saying, I know I'm powerful. I know my worth, my, my truth, my power, my understanding, and I've worked hard for this because you have. But you need to also know that there are mysteries within life and there are mysteries within yourself and you don't have any control over it. So when you're sitting there feeling helpless or feeling overwhelmed or feeling like, you know, the world just takes, takes hold and doesn't stop, know that you're right with the fact that the world takes hold, but you're not helpless. And it's looking at your power and your truth. And it's saying miracles do happen. Truth is found. Prosperity is a part of my life and my existence. And I will settle for nothing less. Because you are the king. You are the manifester of your destiny. And you do so here with, with justice at your core. With this sense of knowledge and understanding and truthfulness at your core. And at your core lies miracles. And as you embrace these miracles, you have abundance. You have the root chakra coming forward. And it's like, I am abundant. I am prosperous. I am bountiful. And you might find here, because we have the root chakra and the sacral chakra, right? We have relationships and we have abundance. You might find that there is a blockage within your life around abundance and relationships. So you might be sitting there and saying, well, this isn't a relationship reading. And that's absolutely correct. But there is a sense of needing, desiring, and wanting abundance within your life. It's at your root. It's at the root of yourself. And when you're looking at what you desire, it's kind of like, I don't want to say focus on the money because I do believe things, there are things in life that are more important than money, but focus on what you value as much as money and it, as well as money because you know there are bills to pay, there are mouths to feed, and that's just how life works. There are responsibilities that get thrusted upon our shoulders and that we accumulate over time. And so here you are claiming your abundance, you are claiming your prosperity, but I am seeing this blockage around the flow of your creative energy because it is within the sacral chakra where we keep a lot of negativity from this life and from past lives. So when we have the negativity from this life and from past lives, we look at things and it's like, it's tinged. It's tinged by the color of, of our pain. It is. And it can be inherited through our DNA. It's like, look at the pain that I've been through, my family has been through, you know, and it can also be inherited through our past lives. Look at what I've lived through. Cellularly, I remember this. It is also a blockage around the flow of creative sexual energy. And as you are embracing this blockage, you're going to find that relationships start to bloom within your life, within yourself, your connection with your spirit guide. And it can be a simple chakra cleanse that you listen to on YouTube, but it's also looking at the energy around you, just feeling the flow of energy and saying, where do I feel tired? Where do I feel sluggish? Sluggish, 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 that's the word. Why do I feel overwhelmed? And that's going to be very important because you really are, during this time, taking the reins of your existence and saying, I am moving forward as the King of Cups. Prosperity, success, bounty, abundance. I know what I know. I am the balancer of truth. It's like Solomon. Think of Solomon when he was going to have the baby cut in half because he saw wisdom. He knew his truth. He was the great equalizer. And the great person would follow through because if you think about that story and that parable, you, you know that it's a bit disturbing because he would have cut a child in half and given half of a dead child to each woman and been like, okay, there we go. We're fair now. But he knew that the mother, mother would not let that happen. And so here with the King of Cups, it's like you follow your heart. You know your heart's truth. You hold so much more answers than you think you do. And as you are seeing these answers within you, as you are seeing this power about you, you are embracing your desires 
and you are embracing your heart, your understanding, and it leads you to your hard work paying off. It leads you to your passion, to your power, to looking at things and saying, I have come really far because I can remember when I toiled. I can remember, you know, creating the prosperity that then led to your kingliness. And you might say, Dane, I'm still there. I'm still in the worker bee zone. And the king also has to be a worker bee. You have to connect, build, grow, and be seen. And that's so important for being cared about, loved, you know, for, for being able to move forward in benevolence. And so here with the Eight of Pentacles, you're finding prosperity becomes you. You're finding your hard work pays off. And you are really seeing the benefits of this within yourself. And as you do so, you are crowned with the Knight of Swords. The Knight of Swords is, I'm going for it. Ready or not, here I come. There is a bit of, of impetuousness, of determination, of, you know, I'm going to go for it. I need to go for it. You have this itch, okay? And it's kind of like when you know things have to change. And you just have this itch for change. You have this power. You have this calling to you, all right? You want the happy family. You want the happily ever after. With the Ten of Wands, okay, what you're running away from right now is the burdens of responsibility. And it's not, well, that sounds harsh. It's not necessarily the burdens of responsibility. It is the dedication. It is the weight of what you've been carrying. And as you're looking at this, as you're looking at your power, as you're looking at your truth, you're like, I do not want to be weighed down anymore. I need to move forward. I need to go after what I want. I need to go after what I love. And as you're having this become a part of you, you're going to find that you charge forward. You charge towards your truth. You, you know what you know. And you're embracing that understanding and that passion very, very succinctly and powerfully. Now, it can also be that an, er that an air sign energy is weighing heavily on you, a Gemini, a Libra, and Aquarius, where they're charging forward and you're left to pick up the pieces of everything that they're dropping and you're sitting there looking at it and being like, what the heck? You know, come on. I'm not, I'm not your gopher. And here it's like, do not pick up what other people are supposed to carry themselves. Give them the opportunity. Yes. Help build them forward. Absolutely. But be bold and be focused on what you love, what you desire and what you want from your life. And that's where you take everything that you're carrying for yourself, Cancer, and you're looking at it. You're discovering it. You're emboldening it. And as you do so, you're going to see all the lessons that you have learned. This is like over 10 years. Everything that you have learned that has shaped you, but that has also scarred you, that has made you feel overwhelmed, that has made you feel out of sync with yourself, that has made you question because you have a wealth of knowledge in your back. The swords are knowledge. Now, again, this is the darkness before the dawn. This is a sense of coming together. And as you put down the weight of everything you've been carrying, it's almost as if here, this is like a shield. So this shield protects you from the pain that you've been carrying because you're so exhausted, you're so busy, you know, you're so looking at what needs to be repaired, you're giving of yourself that you don't have time to look at this. This is almost irrelevant. This is very relevant. Because you're going to find here with the Three of Cups, you're going to find that there is a seed, a pattern, right? Of people that you have trusted, that have hurt, hurt you deeply. People you thought, wow, this person has my back. This person totally understands me. I absolutely get this person. And they get me. And what you're going to see here is that it's like they didn't. They were out for themselves. And that is tinging the fact that there are also really good people in this world who love you, who care for you, who would drop everything for you. And with the three of cups, you might be saying, Dean, I don't have people like that in my life. Then it's your angels and your spirit guides. And you might be thinking, what the heck good is that? You know, your angels and your spirit guides, they can't help you pay the bills. They can't, you know, make life better. They can though. They can guide you guide you towards something more, guide you towards what your heart desires. It may not be the way that you thought it was going to be. I've just finished reading this book, The Power of Ted, and what was so cool in the story that sticks out so much is that this 
this woman, Sophia, is telling the guy, the main character, who I completely forget his name, that he can accomplish anything he wants, you know, if he kind of believes in it. And if he believes in it, he will accomplish it. So he looks at her and says, well, what if I want to be a seven-foot-tall basketball player? And he's like 5'8", and he's older. He knows he's not going to be a basketball player. And she laughs, and she looks at him and says, okay, fair, fair, you think that's impossible. But what if you bring your love to basketball to coach, like, a, a youth group kind of thing, a youth something, and you get together with these kids, and you teach them how to play basketball, how to connect, and you see yourself then molding them, shaping them, embracing, embracing their talents. And 15 years down the road, one day you are sitting in the stands because one of those kids you have coached, they become that seven foot tall basketball player and a bit of the spark of you lives in them. I was blown away. I was blown away. So here with the Ten of Swords, it's like, man, everything has been so hard. Everything has been overwhelming. The darkness is there. I've been betrayed. I've been hurt. I've been overwhelmed. You now have a wisdom and a power to you that is absolutely breathtaking. It is. Because when you aren't defeated, you become wise. And you start rejoicing. And you say, yeah, some people, you can't truly trust them. You just can't. So be wise with who you trust. Be wise with who you let in. Because there's a nurturing brilliance to you. There's also this kind of battle warrior defender of what you desire, of where you want to be, and what you're moving forward, forward towards. With the Empress, this is a sense of, of prosperity, of creative energy. There can be, for some now, a blockage around pregnancy that you are seeing falling away. All right, That is something very, very personal that you might be finding. But this is also here a flow of creative energy. And that's the blockage that we're also seeing really let go of, where you're allowing your creative energy to flow forth, to embrace your power, to embrace what you desire, to move you towards something great. And it's cutting through doubts and fears. It's like, I know what I know, and I'm not listening to anything else. And people might think, okay, you're being single-minded. No, you're taking everything in. You're not being, you're not being silly about it. But you are being succinct with what you are letting affect you or how you are moving yourself forward. You're also righting wrongs, okay? The Queen of Swords is the first one to call herself out on her own bull. So here, it's like when you do something where you go, when you look back at it and you're like, wow, that wasn't fair, that wasn't right, you are going to find that you are putting yourself in alignment with the Empress path, with this path of love, with this path of caring, of healing, of beauty, of power, and of absolute determination. It's like an empress is not somebody who's a pushover. An empress is absolute power. And as you move in absolute power and you embrace your mind, you know your truth, you're transformed and you connect with your angels, okay, right here, as the sky and endless possibilities swirl around you, you move forward. You move forward with your hard work paying off. And because you have worked so hard and you have learned so much, you you have an understanding of who to trust and who not to trust, of those, those people who have ulterior no motives. So when your gut says, be mindful of this person, be mindful of them. You know, when your gut says, wow, that person really doesn't like me, and they start to become really nice to you then, don't let them in all at once. You know, just don't. Make, make a stance for your truth, your power, because you are moving towards your happily ever after, your, your joy. It's like, what is it that I desire for my life? Where is my happiness? Where is my prosperity? Where is my truth? Because you're moving towards the Ace of Pentacles. And this is permeating the whole entire reading, where it's like, I am moving towards divinity, handing me this gift of prosperity that moves me to the next stage of my life, that moves me in this happiness. You're going to see this gift of the Ten of Cups as a gift from the divine that takes a weight off your shoulders, that leads you towards something more. It can be very small. It can be something that other people would completely overlook, but you're seeing it. And you know the power that it has to you. 
And also here, you know the power of your creative energy, of your heart, of your soul. It's like, this is what, this is what I'm here for. I'm here for this love, this beauty, this passion, this power, this purpose. And your life may not look like everybody else's life. It might not be, you know, that perfect cookie cutter image that society projects. Let your love shine through for you. Let your passion shine through for you. And do what brings you joy, what brings you success. Because that's what this time is all about. You're starting an authentic cycle. You're, you're doing a 180. You're seeing that instead of with the roots of heartbreak, pain, and disappointment coming forward and betrayal and hurt and really contemplating, you know, how do I move forward? You're seeing that, yes, that roots you, that keeps you stabilized, that keeps you centered, that makes you, you know, kind of work harder towards what you desire because you know pain. Right? And when you think everything is just going to be lovely because everything has always been lovely, one becomes a little bit more lackadaisical, a little bit more laid back. And here, what you're working towards is this sense of contentment, of joy. And you have here, their clothing mirrors each other. So you have here a coming together of the masculine, the feminine, the child self, and the adult self, seeing the beauty of your dreams, seeing the beauty of what you want. And as you see this beauty and as you embrace this beauty, you put down your burdens that you've been carrying because you're creating exactly what you need. Your, your hard work is paying off. You're, you're being seen, okay, most definitely. And you are also seeing yourself for the effort and the time and the persever perseverance excuse me, that you put into things. And that is stunning. All right, let's see your subconscious message is the three of wands. You're going to see the world opening up to you in a way that you hadn't expected, but you're also going to see yourself being brave. It's like the world does not open if you do not want it to. And a lot of times we say with our mouths, oh, I want this, oh, I want that. But we are so scared. And believe me, I'm like the queen of being afraid of absolutely everything. I would never do these readings if I had to show my face. I'd be like, oh my gosh, everything just has to be perfect. I can't do it. I feel overwhelmed and I would just hide away. So here with the three of cups, not the three of cups, the three of wands, you're looking at your passion. You're looking at what you desire. You also have the repeat. You, you have three threes here, all right? You have three threes and this is the repeat of divinity saying, I'm with you. Open up the doors. Go after what you need. Go after what you desire. It'll be scarier in your mind than it will be in reality. And you're going to see a return on your investment on what you've worked so hard for. Your subconscious chakra message is inspiration. This is, again, the sacral chakra. I like that you have 11 and then 12 here. You are inspired. The creative energy that flows through you is inspiring you to create the relationship that you want with this world and to move yourself forward in this power. And as you do so, your subconscious spirit animal message is the horse spirit. Freedom is yours. It is. Freedom is yours. Beauty is yours. Let yourself be free. Don't be afraid. And follow your heart, Cancer. I mean, that is the greatest thing that you can do for yourself because your heart is so strong and the power of your heart is just absolutely stunning. All right, Cancer, I hope this reading has resonated with you. I wish you nothing but light, love, peace, and happiness. Happiness, there we go. I'm sending loving, healing energy to each and every one of you. I love you all and stay safe. Bye.